Hey guys, so uh, I'm over at Lime Ridge Mall. Uh, just drove, uh, rode the bike over. I'm just going to scroll through my settings if you can see that. Uh, I'm just going to scroll through my settings for my trips. It's my light. Turn that on and then going to scroll through my settings. So as you can see here, my total odometer since I've gotten the bike, I've rode 66 kilometers. Uh, my trip from the time I left home until now is 6.8 kilometers. Uh, I'm just going to leave that there for now. You guys can uh, pan around and then see the odometer as I'm going. Battery voltage 50.6. I've got uh, five full bars. I just charged the battery about, uh, I'm going to say about 21 kilometers ago. Uh, and I believe when I charged it, it was 52.6 volts. So I'm down two volts from the last time. I charged, uh, pow, uh, pedal assist is at zero currently. Once I get uh, over by the link, uh, I'll just actually turn it on to pedal assist one and I'll show you the difference, the uh, torque of this motor to assist me going up the hills. Uh, it's quite impressive actually. And then the uh, power meter, you'll see that here on the uh, top left. Once I uh, start using the, power, the pedal assist, that power meter will go up depending on uh, the incline, the speed that I'm going, and uh, yeah, it's quite impressive, like I said. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to resume map my ride, and uh, yeah, start heading back. I've got both uh, my tail light as well as my headlight on. So yeah, let's uh, check this out. Nice night for a ride. What is this? Uh, Wednesday, September the 2nd, I do believe. And it's 7.50 p.m. Nice night for a ride. Probably about 24 degrees. Very little humidity. You can feel a little damp. But yeah, traffic's been busy. Obviously in the, uh, the mall parking lot now, it's going to be a little bit busier. But yeah, beauty night for a ride. And getting over to... Uh, Mall Road, the Fortino's there, from my house, uh, took me about 23 minutes, and that was uh, pretty much just going up Garth to Stone Church, down Stone Church right to Upper Sherman, down Upper Sherman to, I guess that'd be Lime Ridge, and then uh, back up to uh, Lime Ridge Mall, and then I've been doing the, uh, the big loop around the mall. Just catching my breath. You might think that's funny on e-bike, but I use zero power assist on the way here. Why? Just because people think I, I can't pedal, which is kind of funny. But all kidding aside, I, I, no, actually, you know what? I did use pedal assist once. There's one big hill. Uh, about, I don't know, six, six kilometers into the ride. And for this van, about six kilometers into the ride, and I thought, you know what, I could probably use this about now, which I did. So here we are. So, I'm riding a Magnum Premium 2 e-bike, foldable. Uh, I'll get into all that, why I bought this, purchased this, um, why a folding bike as opposed to a traditional style bicycle. I'll get into that in another video, but I rode this a few times, obviously 66 kilometers, so I thought, you know what, I know a little bit enough about the bike now, I could probably do a video. Yeah, front shocks, disc brakes, hydraulic disc brakes all around, front, rear, 7-speed cassette, so I got a 7-speed uh, transmission or cassette with a, a hub motor. So you see some bikes, uh, they have different styles. They have uh, crank motors. Uh, this one has a hub motor at the back. So I can actually have a, actually I do have a throttle here. I can just crack the throttle here and that uh, is just like an electric bike, which is what this is. And uh, it'll propel me. And I think it goes maximum 28 kilometers an hour. Now, I'm a bigger guy, so I 
probably wouldn't uh, get to that on a firm level surface, maybe 22, 23 kilometers an hour. Uh, obviously going downhill with a little momentum, I would exceed that, but oh, it's all good, a lot of fun. I thought I'd use a 360 camera just to get a different perspective. I haven't used it in quite a while since uh, I think last season for the boat. So yeah. All right, let's go. Green light. So I'm gonna go on the sidewalk here because I don't have a bicycle lane. The approach to the link is short from that last set of lights, and people oftentimes accelerate and uh, cut each other off. And me being a cyclist, I wouldn't fare so well. So, yeah, heading back up Upper Wentworth towards Stone Church. And like I said, once I get to a boat, the bottom of the link bridge overpass, I'll turn on pedal assist one. And if you want to look at the display here, you can see the power meter. You can see I'll put it on pedal assist one, as well as uh, the, uh, the, I think I just said the power meter, and then the speed. So, yeah, a lot of fun. Okay, so here we are. I'm just going to crank it up to pedal assist one. Currently, second gear, we're 11.3 kilometers now. This pedal assist one. Going a little bit too fast for second gear. So here I am in the third gear. And I'm going 17 kilometers now. You can see the power meter. I guess that's about four of the six bars. 17.6 kilometers an hour. So we're at 11 to 17. Pretty awesome. Okay, I'm going to kill the power assist. And this is another bad spot. So as you get over the overpass in a car, an automobile, you're obviously accelerating. And because you're on a little bit of a curve here, by the time the cars come around to accelerate to get onto the link, they're going pretty quick. So, I think everything is good there. Are doing a little gardening? Not sure what that's about. Okay, let's close there. No cars coming. Okay, so, on the sidewalk, I've got uh, front shocks, so they absorb a lot of the sidewalk creaks and cracks and crevices, all the unleveling. I've also got a, uh, right from uh, Magnum, they come with these bikes, a shock absorber in the seat post. So not only do I get cushioned on the front for the shock absorbers, the seat post also has the shock absorber. And then I changed the saddle to an older uh, saddle that I had on my previous bikes that were, uh, you know, I've enjoyed it. It was a, it's a gel saddle. It's very comfortable for long rides. Nice and cool. Wide, which is good for me. So again, we got a uh, crossing so we can go. Okay. We're in the fifth gear. And like I said, it's getting uh, the dusk, I guess. So, you know, I got the, like I said, the before, got the front headlight on, got the rear tail light on. From the manufacturer, they're not the brightest. Tail light, you know, it's hard not to see a red tail light when you're driving towards it. The front headlight or headlamp, whatever you want to call it, not the brightest, uh, but still, 
visible if you're driving towards it, I would imagine. I've got it angled up just past my fender. So, I don't see a lot of the road when it's very, very dark out. But enough. Now, the way this e-bike works, this particular one with the hub motor, there's sensors on the crank. So as I'm pedaling, the little sensors that are built into the, the uh, pedal, when I start pedaling, senses rotation, and then it uh, supplies power to the hub at the back, and that's what propels you. Everybody gets a kick out of this. It's a different looking bike, that's for sure. So, that's what enables you to have this electrical trigger here. So this trigger, I'll show you right once I get around the corner. Once I get to the end of the corner here, there's a bike lane on the left-hand side, just uh, on the other side of the sidewalk. So, the first driveway I get a chance, I'm going to get into that bike lane. And I'll just use the trigger, and I'll show you what that's all about. So I won't even have to pedal. I'm just applying power from the trigger. Killer dog. Okay, so I'm going to stop pedaling. Go at 14.6 pounds. I've just now engaged the electric or the electric motor, and here I am, not pedaling at all on a fairly level uh, section of road here. And yeah, you know what? About 29 kilometers an hour. That's not bad. I'm gonna hit 30. Wow, yeah. That's pretty awesome. So I'm just gonna leave these here. Uh, not because I'm lazy, it's just for obviously demonstration purposes. Because I get told I don't pedal anyway. So I'm going to just leave that in right from the time I turn the corner onto this bike lane, right up to the next main intersection, which is up at Wellington. So say that's about a kilometer, and uh, a little bit of an incline, so the closer I get to the intersection, uh, you'll see my speed probably coming down in the next uh, couple hundred feet. My voltage is still 50.3, it's got a 48 volt battery, 13 and a half hours uh, to charge, it takes about six and a half hours to charge. So, okay. Pretty awesome. I haven't pedaled from the time I left that last intersection to this one. And again, you, you know, I'm 27 kilometers an hour. I just let off because I'm coming up here pretty quick. People don't expect you to go this fast. So if this car to the left of you is going to turn right, they would know that this uh, was coming up on them as fast as it does, which could be pretty scary. Even when you're at an intersection, you know what, I said I wasn't going to pedal, but you know what? Because I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm just going to keep this electrical assist right on. So I've got the full trigger all the way down, about 30.4 kilometers, up a little bit of a grade again. Awesome. Still at 50.3 volts. Yeah, so it takes six and a half hours to charge the battery. Uh, that's when it was completely dead. Um, the last time I charged it, I do believe... Uh, I'm just going to go back to gear 7 and just pedal a little bit just so I can get some kind of work. Uh, I got, I believe it was 28, 29 kilometers, somewhere around there, and I uh, was down to, I think, four bars. Me not familiar with the bike, I thought, you know what, probably better off just to throw, throw a regular charge in there. But going on the forums, Facebook, reading a lot of posts that people are um, putting online about the batteries and the consumption and the, uh, the cycles of these batteries, probably better off that you just wait until the battery is more depleted, maybe down to two bars, depending on your next ride. If you're going to do a long ride, you obviously want more battery capacity, so you would want to uh, obviously have a full charge battery. But I do a lot of city riding. Uh, last ride, which was really cool, went down to the... Uh, mountain brow from my house and that's just to get there it was 
I'm going to say 20, 25 minutes. And that uh, just, I'd say maybe three and a half kilometers, maybe three, yeah, a little bit over three and a half. And uh, a little bit of an incline here, so I'm getting my breath. And then once I got to the, uh, the mountain brow, I thought, you know what, let's just go down the hill. Didn't need any power assist, obviously. Got down to the bottom of the hill, which was probably another kilometer. And probably an elevation difference of maybe 300 meters. Quite steep in that distance. So, going down, no problem. Coming up, I thought, you know what? I'm going to try pedal assist one. And what a difference. Passing <laughs> bicyclists, traditional bicyclists, or I should say traditional bikes, uh, with no problem at all. Not out of breath. It was quite awesome. Kind of made me chuckle a little bit. So, and then the question is, you know, are you trying to increase your your uh, your health and? <laughs> Your physical well-being and all that stuff, yeah. But I'm also I'm not sitting on the couch. I'm not sitting there watching hockey, which I could easily be doing. I'm actually out getting some fresh air and getting some exercise. So you can moderate how time 39 minutes 10 seconds. Distance 10 kilometers. Speed 15. Point three kilometers per hour. Yeah. Split speed thirteen point seven kilometers per hour. Yeah, that's because I was just going thirty kilometers an hour with uh, electrical assist, which is awesome. Up, up at an incline. So yeah, like I was saying about the activity, you know, as much or as little as you want. So if you want to exert yourself a lot more. Go with zero pedal assist like I do quite often, or go with pedal assist one, which is obviously the minimum. And if you're using it for commuting, which I'm sure a lot of people would or could, you just put up your uh, pedal assist to maybe four, five, six. You don't break a sweat, or you don't have to pedal at all. Just use the throttle, electrical throttle. Yeah, so, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to throw it to the pedal. Pedal assist one. There we go. See the difference? It just kind of lunges you. See the amazing drivers. Yeah. So, another thing about this display here is it's got a night light. So, I press the power button on my controller, and I can turn the lamp, the lamp off, or the background light, whatever you want to call it. I press the uh, power button again, and then the uh, back light comes on. Yeah. So yeah, it did say, back to 7th uh, gear, it did say I went uh, 10 kilometers, but... Actually, I went a little bit further because I didn't start the, uh, the the pedaling app probably for about um, a quarter of a kilometer. Not big deal, but still every little bit. And I pedaled it, so it counts. Yeah. So still in pedal assist one, seventh gear, going up a little bit of an incline, and still going 20.2 kilometers and. Showing just one one bar on the uh, power meter. And it's getting to be 10 after 8. So when I was at Limeridge, what it was 10 to 8, something like that. So 20 minutes. So as I was saying about going through the intersections. Kind of uh, jogged my memory last time. Right here, this kind of a situation right here. So that car would probably not expect 
guy like me with a bike like this to go as fast as I am. Um, so they really have to pay attention when they're turning right in front of me. Now the other situation was, I was at an intersection, um, two lanes, um, it's a main intersection, so four lanes I should say, two on each side, total of four, and I was uh, stopped at a red light. As I got a green light, a car stopped in front of me, he was going to turn right onto the same road that I was driving on, riding on. Now, because I had an on-pedal assist one, I started pedaling, and it really propels you fast enough to surprise a lot of those drivers in those vehicles, thinking, you know, <laughs> I can't believe he got through the intersection as fast as he did. So that's, you know, that's cause for concern that you know that maybe, and I learned from this, is maybe not pedal assist through intersections. Either do what I'm supposed to do, is that's, I'm going to slow down here, stop pedaling. What you should do is actually just walk the bicycle through intersections, which is the smart thing to do. Or uh, don't use pedal assist, which I've learned. So I say that where I'm still at pedal assist one going through an intersection. So exactly what this would be happening here is I would get a green light. He would have stopped or she would have stopped. They would have stopped. And I would have started off here. And by the time I got in front of his car, he had done. he had been... You know, busy looking the other direction to see if any cars were, or pedestrians were coming, and then I was already approaching him where I had to go behind him because he uh, he you know started to go through the intersection. So I learned. So again, I'll demonstrate what that was like. So again, this is on a little bit of an incline. He would have been looking to the right about now, and then he pulled out, and then that's when I had to go behind him. So. Exactly what I said I shouldn't have done or I wouldn't do again, I just did for demonstration purposes. That's all. Yeah, I say that now. So yeah. So here we are going down a little bit of an incline. 24.5 times an hour. Uh, power meter is kind of bouncing between 0 and 1. 1 bar. I was going downhill, now we're probably at the level, and then we're going to uh, come up to a little bit of an incline again. Minimal, but I can feel it. That's gear seven, or sorry, six now. And two powers, two bars on the power meter. And from the time I started riding, left the house uh, after that first quarter of a kilometer we'll say uh, 46 minutes almost 11.87 kilometers so I'm going to say that's 12 so that's another thing I have to show you or tell you I hear a lot of people having accidents on e-bikes and I've come to realize the reason for that is this with the pedal assist a lot of people will come up and say, okay, I'm just going to demonstrate this. I, I, I just did it right there. People will come up onto an intersection or onto a curb like this and start pedaling. And then that will just propel you and lunge you forward. The only problem with that is when you're turning and that bicycle starts propelling you, it can actually throw you off the bike because it's got that much power, that much speed, that much... Uh, momentum from your, your body weight, it will just throw you right off the bike. And of course you're going to hurt yourself. So the best thing to do, the best thing to do, is what I, well maybe not the best thing, but what I do, what I do is I will come up to that curb there, and I'm going to demonstrate down here just to, uh, to show you exactly what it is I mean. So first of all, I'm going to leave it in pedal assist one, because this is where I think what I'm going to, to tell you will help you. And on my hydraulic brakes, I have 
what I would call electrical lockouts. So once I engage the brakes, it disables the electrical motor. So I don't have any electrical power going to my motor. So what happens now is I come and I ride the brake onto the curb. So I ride it up on the curb. Now that I'm on, I let go and then it lunges me. Okay? So without that, and I'm only going to demonstrate this once because it is it is pretty scary. We're going to turn around. I just checked. Nothing's coming. See? It just takes right over. It just lunges you like you have no control. So again, you're going through an intersection. You're coming up to a curb and you want to go to the right. I'm going to come at it a little bit of a better angle. So right now, I would just turn. No, yeah, see, you got to be very careful on that. So, if you were to turn a little bit sharper, and I didn't come on at such a, you know, a good angle, and you were turning sharp, that would propel me, because I'm a big guy, that would propel me right into that grass, and I would, you know, if it was concrete, right on the concrete, uh, definitely that's where people would, I assume, get injured. So, those electrical lockouts disconnects, whatever you want to call them, those are a must for me anyway. Yeah. So I'm just going to go up to about 50 minutes. Kind of list this one. Three meters, or three bars on the meter. Just a little bit of a slow drone, a little bit of a hum. You don't hear it now. You can just hear the uh, the rear tire just clicking away. Now, uh, if you can hear it, yeah, that was pretty nice and clear. There. Okay. Yeah. There you have it. That's. Uh, Nice demonstrating right. Hi right, guys. Yeah. Perfect. So you can just see how bright that light is. Not the brightest. If it was pitch black, obviously it would assist you somewhat. Not enough. I'm probably gonna get another headlamp. So here we are, back home. 13.4 kilometers, so that's the difference. Is the bicycle says 13.4 and the distance on the the app says 12.94 so yeah roughly 0.25 kilometers whatever doing the math 0.3 kilometers whatever alrighty I'm gonna hold that to finish that's gonna save it now another thing is I got lots to tell you about these things when I get off the bike and say, for example, I accidentally hit the uh, pedals and it starts recognizing that I'm uh, cranking the pedals, it will lunge the bike even though I'm walking beside it. Or if I accidentally hit the electrical trigger, it will also, watch it on the street, is it'll take off on me. So you got to be very careful when you're walking beside the bike that you uh, don't either hit the pedals or you hit that electrical so what I do is when I'm in the situation is I just power right down I uh, hold the power button for about three seconds that turns off the uh, the computer and then the key I turn off the battery so yeah but uh, that would be a good demonstration for you for riding yeah. alrighty I will catch you later